Hey guys, so here we're gonna get started with Haskell again. So what you want to do is you want to go to uh, your command line or command prompt or terminal, and you can type in ghci for the Haskell compiler. Or what you can do is you can just uh, use the shortcut here, and it'll also um, be equivalent. So. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, this time we're going to go over some functions just to kind of get used to Haskell. So one of the functions uh, that we can use is called the successor function, S-U-C-C. -C. And what it does is it takes in a number and adds one to it. So we take in the number seven and we're going to get the number eight. So the successor of 9 is 10, the successor of 11 is 12, and so forth. So that's how you basically uh, use a function, and, and the successor function is already previously defined in Haskell. So let's look at some more of the functions that they already have. So we can get the uh, minimum value using the min function between two different numbers. So the minimum value between 9 and 11 would be 9. Uh, we can also use the max function. So the max value between 4.5 and 6.7 is 6.7. So you can see how that basically works. And then we can even do a combination where we get the successor of, of uh, 7 plus the max between 5 and 6 and we can add 3 here so what will this equate to? this basically will equate to 8 plus 6 plus 3 so it should give us 17 and it does so you can kinda see how uh, these functions work here now, um, if a function takes two parameters, we can also call it as an infix function by surrounding it with backticks. So, for instance, let's take the uh, div function, that's div, which takes two integers and does uh, integral division between them. So, if we do uh, 100, div 110, then you see we get 100 divided by 10, which is 10. Let's do another div, uh, maybe 50 divided by 2. So we get 25. Now, the infix function is uh, pretty cool. So the same thing, but we're going to have 100. And this is what I mean. You can use... Uh, let me find the, there they go. So you can use that symbol there and div. So this will make it an infix function. And then 10, ah, perfect. So it gives us 100 divided by 10 is 10. And let's do the same for 50. And we should get five. So you see how that works. So that's pretty cool. Um, lots of people who come from the imperative language tend to stick to uh, the parentheses notation, having div a hundred and ten. But anyways, what we can also do is we can create our own functions. So let's see let's create a function we want to create a function that takes in a number and multiplies it by 2 so I'm going to call it mult by 2 and it takes in one variable we'll call it x and x will be equal to 2 times x and press enter. So now let's uh, run that function. 
and let's put in a number like 5 so we should get 10 because 5 times 2 is 10 and we do and let's put in another number like uh, 10 we get 20 and you can kind of see where it goes from there let's do 500 and we get a thousand so that's definitely pretty cool let's create another one let's create one called uh, uh, double us and let's take in A and B so now we're going to take in two uh, parameters two, two numbers and we're going to do A times 2 plus B times 2. And now, let's call it double S. And we'll put in 1 and 2. And so what we should get back is 1 times 2, which is 2, plus 2 times 2, which is 4. So we should get 6. And we do. All right. So let's go over uh, maybe one more thing, which is kind of important. Let's do something like uh, let's create another function. We'll call it double small num. And we're going to take in a. And a is going to be equal to, this is right here is going to be a little different. If a is greater than 10, then x, let's actually, then a, else we're going to do 2 times a. Okay, so what did we just do here? What, do we, what is the function we just created? What we did is we said that double small num will take in a variable or a number. We called it a. If a is greater than 10, then it's just going to return that number. But if a is less than 10, it's going to multiply that number by 2. So let's try this. So a number that's greater than 10 would be 11. And it should just return 11. And it does. Another number greater than 10 would be 100. And it should just return 100. Now let's try a number less than 10, like 6. And it should return 12. So these are all fun ways that you can define functions in real time. Now. Uh, we can make it even better. Maybe we can add a, a one at the end. But for now, I'm just going to leave it how it is. Let's see what else. I think that'll be all for this tutorial. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Eventually, we're going to get to using Haskell files to run code kind of like how you would for C programming have .c files they have .hs files so I'll see you guys on the next video uh, thanks for watching and please subscribe and leave comments and questions and I try my best to get back with you bye bye